This is the word of God's grace brought to you by the Standing Church International. We're a life transforming church with a vision of raising a supernatural army for the Lord. Get ready to be blessed by God's word and experience miracles. The praise of the righteous. Psalms 149, verse 5 to 9. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Matthew 21. Verse 16, and said unto him, Hearest thou what they say? And Jesus said unto them, Yes, have you never read, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise? Psalms 8, verse 2, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Praise is the response of the believer to the promises of God. And in this year, there are open doors for us. Our heads are lifted above the system. Praise is the response of the believer to the promises of God. And the first defining thing in the life of a believer is his praise. In response to all God has done for him. The first defining, not the most, the first defining thing. Giving thanks to God who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who has delivered us out of the authority of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Giving thanks to the Father who has made us partakers. Not necessarily for what we have yet experienced, but for what he has made us to partake of in Christ. Praise is the first defining thing in your life. And when we say something is the first defining thing in the life of a person, it means that it is what begins your journey in Christ. And it is what gives your journey in Christ a colorful meaning. If your journey in Christ will have a colorful meaning, it must dwell on the strength of your praise. That is why it is not big believers that God has given the authority to be able to praise him well. It is the mouth of babes and sucklings. When we talk about babes and sucklings, what does that remind us of? In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, as newborn babes. That means that praise begins from the day you are born again. And when you look at Psalms 149, you will see power in praise. That means that one of the strength of the newest believer that produces miracles in his life is his ability to praise God for what Christ has done. That a man has not yet become as matured as some other people, but you are seeing the fruits of redemption in his life because of his acknowledgement of what Christ has done for him. In the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained strength. You have perfected praise. That perfection is to strengthen something. That's why it says you have ordained strength. So in the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have strengthened praise. That means that praise is strengthened in your mouth. That is why in Psalms 149, verse 9 says, This honor I have all his saints. The honor to be able to praise and break the works of the devil is for everyone. It's not for some exclusive few. There's none of you in Christ that cannot stand up and crush the works of the devil. The praise of the righteous. So when you understand this, you begin to see that your praise is quality when you understand what Christ has done for you. The first altar that was set up in the life of Abraham was the altar of praise. It was set up between Moriah and Sikem. And that Sikem means teacher. That Moriah means shoulder. That is, as we are taught what Christ has done for us, then can our praise go up. The strength of your praise is knowing who you are in Christ. I am righteous. I am bold, I am this, I am that. That is what strengthens your praise. If not, you will find yourself finding joy from the fact that others are going down and you are going up. 
Your testimony will be like when others are sinking, me, I'm going up. But that's not how the righteous talks. Rather, for the righteous, when others are cast down, the righteous will turn to them and say, lift them up, and God will lift them up. The righteous is not just seeking exemption for himself. He is seeking exemption because of others. Your rise is the rise of others. If you don't understand this, you will give yourself more to psychoanalysis than what Christ has done. Psychoanalysis tries to help motivation, tries to help you have faith in yourself so you can function better than the people that don't have faith in themselves. So your strength is derived from building yourself more to have faith in yourself and then have an edge over those that don't have enough faith in themselves. So it's a competitive thing. It's not about who you are. So you derive your joy from the fact that others are down. You derive your joy from the fact that you are better than others. And every time you meet someone that is higher than you, you start doing more. But this thing that we are talking about, from the day I was born again, I was born perfect. I don't have a sense of lack. I don't have a sense of inadequacy. I don't have a sense of inferiority in me. I am the best that can be. It is because of the blessing of Christ's finished works that God has something to do with you. Not because of any other thing. It's not because you are better than others. And this is why our praise springs up from what Christ has done. When you read the Bible, you will see that there's an element in a man's life that if this element is absent, how far you can go is limited. And that is the element where God does things for you because of himself, not because of you. That God appears to Abraham, appears to Isaac, appears to Jacob, lifts Joseph, not because of himself, but because of the blessing. That if the blessing of God is not the driving force in your life, the competition of men can drown your voice out. That it is because of the blessing of God that I'm prospering. That it is because of the blessing of God I'm going to prosper this year. And this year, indeed, you will prosper because of the blessings. His finished works is my benefit. Not any other thing. That's the greatest benefit you can have. That Christ died for you. He was buried for your sake. And he was raised up again. That's enough to praise God for. Not that the phone you were trusting God for came or didn't come. That Jesus Christ has done it all is enough. Even if God does not do anything in my life, what Christ has done is enough. That is the basis of thanksgiving. And it is when you start praising God this way that you will develop a positive act in spite of environmental conditions. If you want to be a positive person, you can't do it without praise. And if you want to praise in a way that will make you positive, you cannot do it depending on circumstances. It must be on what Christ has made you, who he has made you, and what he has done for you. Because the only thing that helps us to keep a positive heart is when we keep God's promises before us and choose to rejoice in his word despite what is happening around us. And the only way you can do that is by looking at what Christ has done for you. If you look at your accounts now, it might feel like God is not doing anything. If you look at what job you are on, it might feel like God is not doing anything. But you cannot look and see that he has made you righteous and say he has done nothing. You cannot see that he has made you a partaker of his divine nature and say he has done nothing. He has done everything and he has done it well. In Romans chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible says that because they did not glorify God, God gave them over to their foolish imaginations. That means the strength of your imagination is in your praise. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became what? Vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts was darkened. That means that the strength of your heart is in your praise. The fruitfulness of your imagination. You cannot be negative and be fruitful in your imagination. You cannot entertain depression and be productive at the same time. It is thanksgiving that keeps your energy positive. It is thanksgiving that keeps your academics going. Even when they brought the test out that you did not like, if you go into depression, it can't go up. Everything dries around you when there is depression. You don't look at your account and say nothing is happening. There's somebody that told me that he wanted to sow a particular seed in millions. When he couldn't get it, when he got to sell on something percent, he said, I already saw that my heart wanted to start complaining. So he sowed his seed. It was a seed he has never sown before. And then he says, sir, this seed that I sowed took me six months last year as an income for it to enter into my hands. And I have sown it. See what he did. That's praise. 
Because he said he was getting to where he was already about to start saying that, you know, this money is no more moving. Now what's going on? That's when he sweet and said, but no, this thing will have taken me six months to gather for. Let's sow it so that we can know we have sown what we have never done. I said, ah, you have got something, no? Because now that you have sown this one, that other one you want to sow, it will come easily. Don't compete with people. Identify with Christ. Because it's this competition with people that will not allow you to see the best in what God is doing for you currently. The thing that is happening with you is the best of God for you. And give him thanks for it. If you heard my testimony, when all that was coming to my hand was 50,000, you that you are any millions now, your testimony will look like rubbish. That's how you should be able to make your testimony. Not that your testimony is dependent on how bigger it is than others. 10,000, you can rejoice on it more than somebody that got 10 million. Praise is your strength. There are people that say, well, this is all that I was trusting God for. This is all I was trusting God for. I know what God has shown me. When you live in expectation of future promises, you lose the color of today. Today stops looking colorful when you are too conscious of what you are expecting tomorrow. Live tomorrow. Enjoy today. Let tomorrow take care of itself. That's Bible. This taking care of tomorrow is not biblical. It brings stress. You can have a picture and idea of what you want, but you must rejoice where you are. That's why I thought I'm a believer. As the price is going up, I'm feeling it. Isaac felt it too. That's why he wanted to live. But you won't feel it for long. Because of the covenant. Because of the blessing. This thing that you want to start saying that there is no money and you are not going to rejoice. It's not better to rejoice in the blessing so that the God of the covenant can rise for you. God told Isaac, sit down here. Isaac stayed. It's because he felt it. That's why he wanted to leave. That you are feeling it is what shows that you are still a human being. But you are not going to feel it for long with your eyes on the covenant. Glory to God forevermore. I saw a vision 2019 when we were preparing for our enlightenment special. An image. There was no money. Money was not coming. There were bills. But a righteous man is not conscious of needs. A righteous man is not conscious of his lack. He is conscious of his supply. I have what it takes to do anything he puts in my heart. I saw that vision and I saw 8 million naira written on an envelope. Where will I get 8 million from? Who will give me 8 million? I didn't know when I came out, I shared with some people and said, then start giving God thanks. It means the thing has landed. Thanks me. I said, okay, I will go on Thanksgiving stretch every day for two hours. All of my prayer was Thanksgiving. That's where we are now. Lord, I thank you. Maragaba, sekete, lem bredea. Thank you for what you have done. Laba, dea, se bredea, kiaba. Until within the time frame, that 8 million was in my hands. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Because Praise in the mouth of the righteous is a weapon that works wonders. Psalms 149, verse 6, the Passion Translation. God's eye and holy praises fill their mouths, for their shouted praises are their weapons of war. Their shouted praises are their weapons of war. People say, praise God so you can get his attention and he will do for you what he will not. Just like the way we say that prayer, we are not trying to only get God's attention. We are releasing power. That's how praise is. Praise is not just me trying to psych God up. It is me teaming up with God to release his power. There are times that we must just continue giving God thanks. Praising him. Either for what he has done for us in Christ or when a situation stands up, we stare God's word in the face and continue praying and speaking until thanksgiving comes out of us. You can only praise by faith. You can't praise with psych. You can't psych yourself up to praise. If you try to live your Christian life by feelings, you will go down. So what is praise? Praise is not just that you are singing, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Not necessarily. It starts from the reflection. This is what Christ has done for me. This is who he has made me. This is what God has said about his word in this area. Then we start with prophecy. We start praying. Then prophetic products come that give us joy. Praise comes because we are walking by faith, not by sight. But we are walking by faith because we have seen his light. So we start fasting and praying like Jehoshaphat for three days. Then the day somebody stands up and says, you will not have to go down to this battle. They did not say, let us start praising now that there's a problem. Let us be praising, let us be praising. As we are praising, God will not send the angel. God will come down by himself. He is not sentiment. When he was sad, he prayed. He is any afflicted, let him pray. He didn't say, let him think. It is the person that is merry that the Bible says that, let him sing psalms. But the person that is afflicted, pray. They began to pray. By the third day, prophetic product came. As soon as he came like this, 
they set up praise singers and they started shouting, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good and his mercy endure forever. That was enough to down the enemies. Praise is a response to prophetic products. So when you want to get into an attitude of praise, which is your warfare, you start with prayer. If you are not at that place where you want to give God thanks easily, pray. Pray until your eyes see what Christ has done. Sit down there, speaking, brooding over that thing. And other times, you are not praying. It is a lie that we look at Anna. And whereas she will have prayed a longer prayer, you will just say, Madam, God has heard your prayers. And then the next thing is thanksgiving. This year, your mouth will be filled continually with thanksgiving. God is filling your mouth with thanksgiving. What are the three things praise does for you? Number one, vengeance. He said that let the praise of God be in their mouths like a two-edged sword in their hands. Psalms 149 verse 5, Passion Translation. God's eye and holy praises fill their mouths. For their shouted praises are their weapons of war. So when he says that let God's praise be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands, he's not saying that be singing praise and go and look for a two-edged sword. He's saying the praise in your mouth is your two-edged sword. You are thanking God if you say, I am righteous. Or a problem is coming and you say, thou has made my feet like hands feet. That's praise. It is a form of appreciation to God that God, you are bigger than this problem. This is what you have done concerning this problem. And then it is an arrow against the affliction that is upon your life. You know, he says, let them execute vengeance with this thing. He said, to execute vengeance upon the Eden. Amplified says, upon the Eden, upon the people, upon the nations, upon every resistant power. Vengeance comes by praise. Vengeance is made out by praise. There are many times in the lives of believers that there are resistant powers. That they will enter into the system. Among the Eden, there are people resisting them. Among the people, there are people resisting them. Amongst the tribes, there are people resisting them. And this thing is the picture we see in Jehoshaphat's war. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Three people gathered against them. Moab, Ammon, and the inhabitants of Montseah. Moab means of father. Ammon means people, nations, tribe. A tribal people. It just means tribe at face value, but the root word from which it is taken means people, nations. These people gathered against God's people. Why do the Eden rage? Why do they imagine a vain thing? Because the devil cannot have you going up and he'll just be looking at you like that. And then the inhabitants of Mount Seir. What does Mount mean? Mountain, right? And also another word, promotion. That is promoting something. What does Seir mean? That Seir is like an animal, a demon possessed goat. Like the demon that possessed the madman of Gadara that said no man goes through this place. That means that this thing that we are dealing with, we are dealing with sponsorship of demonic powers. It's not a matter of whether you are fighting them consciously or not. There are people that have stood up that said nobody will pass this place. But this year, you will pass it. The Bible says that that madman of Gadara was there. He said, and no man went through that place. They dared not go through that place. There are people that have stood up and said, in this house, nobody will go past being an artisan. In this house, you will never go past having an HND. I break the hold of those devils. Amen. You can look at your family and know that there's a lead. You will look at father struggling, mother struggling, first daughter struggling. That one, we say, I'm not going to struggle. By the time that one wants to go another way, it's bad, bad things the person will be doing. And you will look and you know that this bad thing, this one's life has already scattered. Unless God intervenes on this person. Then you look and you will see that there is problem in this family unless God rises. God rises for you now. Whatever has been standing against your family, whatever has been from the Mount of Seir, standing up to destroy and wreck havoc in your family, I break it. Whenever you stand up and you look around and there are oppositions like this, praise must come out of your mouth too. When you see generational causes, you don't acknowledge it, you praise God. Because this promotion of demonic oppressions, generational foundational problems do it too. Where there are authors that are speaking in families and people have recognized them. 
These altars appear to people in their dreams. There are people that, if they see snake in the night, their younger sister will see rabbits. Their elder sister will see scorpion. Asekiti maragata teka. Whatever it is has been standing against you, appearing to you from your dreams, I break it. But the problem with baby Christians, Pastor, I saw this dream, oh, but because you are a baby Christian, you feel you don't have energy to rise and quench it. But it says, out of the mouth of babes, out of the mouth of babes as is strengthened praise. So when you see a problem as a believer, don't say, Pastor, there's this generational cause. Stop making a big deal out of a generational cause. Make a big deal out of praise. Put praise where praise belongs. Praise is in what Christ has done for you. You don't ignore the patterns, but you use what Christ has done to quench the pattern. That shall not be afraid of the arrow that flies by night, nor the pestilence that walks around in noonday, nor the terror. Paratia. Why? Because you are standing in Christ. I'm not afraid. You know what you're going to do? You will stand, you begin to pray. You are going to begin to take authority. You foul pattern that has been repeating itself in my family. I stand against you in the name of Jesus. It might take you one day. It might take you two days. It might take you three days. But as soon as prophetic products come, the enemies will self-destruct. Because when that thing starts coming out of your mouth, that you start saying, no, the Lord has made my feet like hinds feet. If you can get to that place where prophecy is coming out of your mouth like praise, the enemies will self-destruct. Every enemy that is ganking up against your life, ganking up against your destiny, hiding behind the economy, hiding behind the family problem, I crush it. Anytime you rely on God's power in the face of the stiffest opposition, that attitude alone is praise. Because praise is putting glory where glory belongs. For you to say you are praising God, it means that you have considered God as the highest. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. The thing that makes you give thanks is the thing that has told you that God is bigger than your problems. Vengeance must be released on the heads of some people. There are people that it is because of them you are not getting your jobs. There are people that it is because of them you are not getting your contract. There are people that it is because of them your family is not moving forward. I don't want to know where they are. I don't want to know who they are. But those ones that have stood up who will not repent. Today, at my voice, they go down. You will see the hand of the Lord in your affairs. This is how you judge generational strongholds. The children of Israel, it was vengeance on the head of the Egyptians that turned their fortune around. 400 years of labor met with one ninth of favor. And that one ninth of favor swallowed up their years of labor. Whatever's making you sweat, I judge it. Whatever has been making you struggle, it doesn't matter what they say is happening in the economy. The economy is not responsible for your struggling. I judge that struggle. Number two is rulership. Praise brings you into rulership. How do I know that? He said, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and it's two edged sword in their hands that they will execute vengeance upon the people and bind their kings and their princes with fetters, with iron. What does that sound like? In Psalm 105, verse 21, 22, 23, 24, when he was talking about Joseph, he said that Pharaoh made him ruler over the land of Egypt so that he will bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators what? Wisdom. So that means that this thing that happened to Joseph by the covenant, we can stir it up by praise. When you enter a sector and you want to dominate, praise. You remember it's not just singing. When you enter and say, I've come here to take over, you have started to. You start speaking in tongues until the high praise of God is loud in your mouth. Until you see yourself saying, that was made my feet like hinds feet. The Lord my God is causing me to walk upon my high places. You will stay until praise comes out of your mouth. Because only when you start doing that will things start changing. And this thing, you use it in systems where there are kings, there are princes that can stand against you. They carry Joseph, they threw him inside prison. God lifted his head. They carry Daniel, they threw him inside prison. This is how the system is. You can't be going up on the covenant and everybody will leave you alone. There are people firing arrows per second, per second. And there are people raising up policies to kick you out. Many people want to take your seats, but today they are judged. 
God is raising your head above your contemporaries. Rise with your praise. When you find yourself in the midst of a harsh environment, the king does not favor you. The prince does not favor you. Rise with your praise. Any sector you enter into, rise with your praise. Stop speaking inability. It's not going to get you anywhere. Rise with your praise. Stop saying, I don't know. I, I'm not fit enough. I'm not. Stop it. Thou has made my feet like Ein's feet. God has made your feet like Ein's feet this day. God is causing you to walk upon your high places. God is switching things around for you. The praise of the righteous. Enforcement. Psalms 149, verse 9. To execute upon all these people we have spoken of earlier. The judgment that is written. That means that this praise, this making what Christ has done to be loud and high and sharp in our mouth is the way of enforcing God's word. There are systems that come together to ensure that you are not okay. Yes. There are people that gather kings. This enforcement is how we do number one and number two. Vengeance and rulership. Because vengeance and rulership is not smiled at. It is enforced. You will carry what God says about you. You will start speaking. One Sunday, as we were giving God thanks, one of the sisters that I called, I laid my hands on her and the power of God broke. And generational cycle was lifted. There are some of you that you are from certain clans and tribes. You know how your tribe is. You know how your clan is. And your life is looking like it's already following that pattern. You must do something about it. There are tribes that once people are going up, they don't live long. The people must be poor. If they start going up like this, they must take them down. Otherwise, they will have to put their hands into fetish things. Their only major escape that is clean is this Christ that we are talking about. This thing is what Jehoshaphat did when he said, arrange the priests and the priest singers in front. And they started giving God thanks. When you do that, that's how you enforce God's word. You can enforce God's word on your finances. When you start speaking, whatever it is that is holding the finances, breaks. What a refreshing time in the word it has been. We believe you've been blessed by God's word and have received encounters for mighty miracles. To download more messages like this one, please visit our website at www.thestandingchurch.com. There you will find an abundance of resources to help you grow in your Christian walk and deliver miracles of destiny to you. If you have never made the decision to be saved and would like to receive Jesus into your life or rededicate your life to him, Please say the following words out loud. Lord Jesus, I confess you as Lord over my life. I believe that you died for me and that God raised you from the dead. I receive all that you have made available for me through your death, burial, and resurrection. I declare right now that I am a child of God. I'm free from sin and I am the righteousness of God. Amen. Congratulations, you are now saved. We're so glad you made the decision to receive Christ today. Please write to us at plus 234-813-477-3145 to share your salvation testimony with us today. In or around the city of Ibadan, we invite you to join us at the Dominion Center for each of our services in the week. Join us on Sundays for our transformational Life of Victory services by 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Our prophetic lifting services also hold on Mondays by 5 p.m and our prayer and communion services on Fridays by 5 p.m. Each of these services are put together to deliver God's word and power to you and bring you into the life of prosperity, health, dominion, and liberty that God has ordained for you. Not in Ibadan. Don't miss out. Our services and special meetings are streamed online via our Mixer and YouTube platform at The Standing Church. We look forward to having you worship with us. God bless you. We cannot wait to hear your testimonies and we look forward to having you connect with us. Please write to us at info at the standing or call us on plus 2348 1347 or connect with us via our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at The Standing Church. We love you and God bless you.